What is Confucianism? Confucianism is one of the most influential philosophies and belief systems in ancient China. In fact, according to scholars, Confucianism had laid down the foundation for much of Chinese culture. Confucianism was founded by Confucius, a Latinized form of the Mandarin Chinese title, Kong Fu Tzu, which means Master Kong. But it must be noted that Confucius did not intend to found a new religion. According to scholars, Confucius' intention was to interpret and revive the unnamed religion of the Zhou dynasty under which many people thought the ancient system of religious rule was bankrupt. Scholars debated whether Confucianism can be considered as a philosophy or religion. Of course, there is no one universal name or label that we can attribute to Confucianism. Some scholars call it a social ethic, others call it a political ideology, while others viewed it as a philosophy or religion. As we can see, Confucianism may be understood as an all-encompassing way of thinking and living that entails ancestor reverence and a profound human-centered religiousness. As we can see, Confucianism is not an organized religion, but it's interesting to note that it spread to other East Asian countries under the influence of Chinese literate culture and has exerted a profound influence on spiritual and political life. Both the theory and practice of Confucianism have indelibly marked the patterns of government, society, education, and family of East Asia. Although it is an exaggeration to characterize traditional Chinese life and culture as Confucian, Confucian ethical values have for well over 2,000 years served as the source of inspiration, as well as the court of appeal for human interaction between individuals, communities, and nations in the Sinaitic world. On Core Confucian Philosophy and Beliefs At the core of Confucius philosophy is the belief that the human person's nature is inherently good. Confucius also believes that every person has feelings of pity, shame, and moral goodness. Furthermore, Confucius believes that humanity, justice, and wisdom are within a person's nature. However, for Confucius, one can be made to do evil as a result of external influence. For this reason, Confucius established education and self-cultivation as the way for individuals to overcome evil. And for Confucius, the cultivation of the person is to be accomplished through the way, and the cultivation of the way is to be done through Ren, or humanity. Since every person has the beginnings of goodness within herself, all people therefore are born equal, and thus it becomes imperative for every person to cultivate and develop what is innately good in herself into an ever larger realm, an ever higher level. Hence, for Confucius it is through education that virtues are developed and integrated into one's personality. On the goal of Confucianism and the virtues of Ren and Yi. In the Analects, we learn that the ultimate goal of Confucius philosophy is the realization of Junzi, that is, perfect gentleman or superior man. And for Confucius, a Junzi is someone who possesses, among other things, Ren and Yi. Ren was a core aspect of Confucian teachings. In fact, of all the Confucian virtues, Confucius and his followers regarded Ren as the most important quality of a moral person. Ren can be referred to as a synthesis of concepts such as love for others, compassion, and benevolence. The primary meaning of Ren is humanity in the larger sense that is, natural goodness of heart as shown in association with one's fellow man. For Confucius, someone who possesses Ren is capable of loving others and treating them with kindness. Hence, the essence of Ren is being fully human. In fact, according to Confucius, what truly distinguishes human beings from animals is not the body, but the heart and mind. The prominent feature of the heart and mind is empathy, that is, the ability to feel the suffering of others. Yi can be described as righteousness and justice. It signifies what is right. 
Confucius considered righteousness as part of the essence of a true gentleman. In the Analects, Confucius said, The superior man does not set his mind either for anything or against anything. What is right he will follow. Confucius added, The superior man understands righteousness, the petty man understands profits. As an essential human virtue, ye, is something a good man values and holds important. But the desire to be righteous often conflicts with other values such as power, influence, or wealth. But for Confucius, ethical behavior will only result when moral considerations take precedence over competing values, and inner desires are managed through the development of virtues that make up a moral character. Confucius said, when observing gain, the superior man strives for righteousness. Cultivation of character, Confucian learning, and service to others. As we already intimated above, the primary concern of Confucius is character formation defined in ethical terms. As Judith Burling puts it, if the outer side of Confucianism is characterized by conformity and acceptance of authority, the inner side can be referred to as cultivation of conscience and character. As we can see, Confucius valued learning and believed that it is through learning and practice that people become differentiated. In the Analects, Confucius said, By nature, men are alike. By practice, men become far apart. For him, whether or not the roots can grow into the great tree of humanity depends essentially upon whether or not, and how, humans preserve their heart and mind, and cultivate their character. While Confucius emphasized the importance of cultivating moral virtues within one's heart and mind, he insisted that one's cultivation of character must involve extending virtues to others. Confucius said, Now the man of perfect virtue, wishing to be establishing himself, seeks also to establish others, wishing to be enlarging himself, he seeks also to enlarge others. Therefore, the difference between a morally superior and a morally deficient person is that the former has understood what is righteous in one's own self and extended it to others, while the latter is devoted only to satisfying his or her own interest. But it must be noted that self-cultivation in the Confucian sense is far from merely being an internal search for one's moral sensitivity. Instead, it involves broadening concern with other people. For the Confucians, therefore, the self transforms itself as it encounters other selves. Thus, the whole process of Confucian learning involves enriching the self and refining one's wisdom to be considerate of others. Unlike many Western cultural traditions, Confucianism does not regard self in isolation, but considers an individual as embedded in a network of relationships. As one begins life in a family and then moves outward toward increasingly more complex social relationships, these relationships help define the person and influence ethical character in them. Human growth is then a broadening of vision, of relationship, and of the ethical bonds that hold people together. It is also important to note that the Confucian perspective of cultivation of character has its emphasis on the search for personal strength and social responsibility. Learning, for the Confucians, has two purposes. The first is to learn to be an upright, moral person. This purpose is the ideal of Junzi, of a gentleman or a superior person. After the gentleman has cultivated virtues and elevated his character, it is then possible for him to apply what he has learned. In fact, in Confucianism, to serve the people and the state is considered the ultimate purpose of learning and a moral obligation of a true gentleman.